Hi everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Ara, and today we are getting started working on the ship cap, no, I renamed it, darn it. The Captain's Quarters. I have had a ton of fun reading through you guys' comments and suggestions, and a lot of you had some really interesting questions that made me start thinking about who the captain is, what his character is like, so that we can create a project together that um, ends up being really cool, hopefully. So one of the first questions was, is he a pirate or a regular ship captain? And I have pirate ideas for something else in the future. So for this project, I want him to just be a regular ship's captain. Another question you had was whether this was a male or female ship captain. And for some reason, I've just always had in mind that this was going to be a male. And so I'm kind of sticking with that for now. And the two really tough questions you guys were asking me is what time period is this in and what location? Of course, when we're dealing with miniatures, details matter. And so if you guys are going to be helping me, then you probably need to know this information. I got really bogged down thinking about these questions because I really I really wanted to have a lot of fun with this project and be really loosey-goosey with it and just not feel like I'm nailed down to this particular time period, this particular location, and I can't add anything outside of that. And so as I was thinking about this, I got a comment from Heather Wise who said, a time traveling, well she suggested a time traveling ancient pirate and the ship models, which of course, um, if you watch my last video, the ship models are going to be a main feature in this. The ship models are ships that he's sailed over his long life. And that was just such a cool idea. And so um, even though he's not going to be a pirate, I really like the idea of a time traveling ship captain, but who has um, an affinity for the 1700s. So we're going to be looking more for 1700s type feel, furniture, because that's um, maybe where he originated from. Um, I don't really know. We'll have to kind of figure that out. But it's going to give me a little bit of leeway to put the ship models that I want below. Um, I'm not going to have to be super, super strict on what can and can't be in the ship. So anyway, I thought that was a really cool idea. Thank you for the suggestion, Heather. So um, that could also bring in some interesting technology type thinking stuff. I don't really know. So you guys will have to give me suggestions based on that line of thought. And one of the other questions that was kind of bouncing around in my head that several of you guys asked me is if I was going to build the outside of the ship, either the deck on top or like the outside where the windows are. And the more I thought about this, I really think I want to create a faux horizon that you can see out the windows. Um, I've never tried that before. I want to give it a shot and for that reason I don't think I'm going to be creating the outside of the ship. Now if you're following along and making your own ship project, you could totally do whatever you want to do and a lot of the techniques I'm going to be using on the inside of the ship can be used on the outside to create a similar effect. And so if you would like to follow along and make that, you're more than welcome to. I just don't plan to do that on my own project. I think. Plans can always change. So with those questions answered, if you have any ideas based off of those answers, feel free to leave them in the comments. You know I love to hear what you guys are suggesting. But today we are working on putting up the walls. This is going to be the very first thing that I'm doing and it took me a little longer than I thought. I thought I would get a little further, maybe get some support beams, but I ended up just doing the four walls. Uh, no, just three. Three walls and a floor. So I hope you guys will enjoy that. It ended up being bigger than I thought. I'm pretty sure I like laid out on my mat and like measured what I, how big I thought it would be. But once it was together, it's huge and it's two stories. <laughs> So um, it's going to be interesting working in it because it's just bigger, way bigger than the coffee shop. But, you know, more room for more miniatures. So it's not a problem. It's just bigger than I thought. So let's get started. 
If you watched my planning video for this project, you will probably remember this little floor plan that I drew. This is for the second floor of the captain's quarters, and I did it with one centimeter equaling one foot, and of course in 12 scale that means it's going to equal one inch. So my floor plan is 14 inches by 18 inches, which didn't seem that big before, but now seems really large <laughs> compared to my floor plan sketch. I've decided to use foam board and mat board for this build. Foam board gives it thickness and the mat board gives it a little bit more stability. So I'm taking the piece that I cut out of foam board, that's um, black, the black piece is foam board I just got at the dollar store, it's called ready board, and I cut the exact same size piece out by tracing it onto some mat board. I get lots of questions about what mat board is, you will find the definition for it in the description box. When I put the mat board on top of the foam board, it is about a quarter inch thick. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the walls. So to mark out where the walls are going, I'm going to be making a quarter inch thick mark around three of the sides of the base. This lets me know that this is where the walls are going to go. Once I have where the walls are going, I can also mark in where the door is on the left side of the room and this just helps me know that I do need to finish the floor in that spot because you will see it if the door opens. So now I have my general plans for where the walls are going to touch the floor and where the door opening is. I need to make sure that I get the spiral staircase opening correct. So what I'm measuring out is where the center of the opening is. I'm going to use a tack, string, and a pencil to create a, um, let's see, it's a two and a half inch radius hole. So I'm putting a tack in the very center and I'm gonna mark out two and a half inches away from the center where the tack is. And I actually decide to move the tack back just a little bit. I want a little bit more space between the spiral staircase hole and the back wall. So I just moved it a little bit. And what I wanna do is make sure that I have a loop in my string that allows my pencil to be exactly two and a half inches away from the tack. And then I just put my pencil into the loop and then I can spin it around the tack, which is stuck into the board, and that's going to give me a two and a half inch radius circle or a five inch diameter circle, which is going to be the opening we need for our spiral staircase. Now, most of the openings I'm going to cut after the mat board and the foam board are glued together. This one I'm cutting before that because circles are extremely hard to cut and I want to do my best job to make this as clean of a cut as possible. So I'm going to cut it from the mat board first, make sure I line up my two pieces and then I'm going to trace it onto the foam board below and then cut that out as well. I'm also using a very new sharp blade so they have the cleanest cuts possible. Now I'm just going to interpret the rest of my floor plan onto the floor so I know where everything is going to go. I'm putting in where the beams are gonna be on the back wall. There's going to be like a closet area and then also an area where the bed is. So I know in that space, I don't really have to um, put flooring. Now what I'm using right now are some drafting triangles and I'll leave some links for those in the description if you're interested, but I find them extremely helpful whenever I'm working with floor plans. Um, it just, like you can line one edge up with um, an edge that you know is straight and then draw a perpendicular line going down and you know you have a 90 degree angle. So I have these from being in school studying architecture and I, they've come in handy so many times with miniatures, so I wanted to share that tool with you. Um, like I said, links in the description if you're interested. So now I'm going to take, this is actually Gomez's desk from the Adams family, but because this floor plan was looking so large, I wanted to just put some dollhouse items on the floor to uh, kind of get a feel for how it looks and make sure that the floor was not too incredibly large. Once I put in a desk and a chair, I can see that yes, it is the right size and um, this is also the little table that I worked on in the live stream, which is going to be like a little um, map type desk, but it does look like I've got 
about the right size for the floor. It's just way bigger than the coffee shop, and so it just kind of threw me off. But so far, it's looking good. Now I've got my model out that I built from cardboard. Again, this was in my original planning video. This is going to help me figure out how high I need the walls. So I did that again in one centimeter equals a foot, but now I'm translating it into one inch equals a foot. So for every centimeter, it's going to be one inch. Therefore, my walls are eight centimeters high on my cardboard model. So I'm going to make walls that are eight inches high in the foam board. And it also um, has like a um, angled wall because this is supposed to look like a ship. And so I'm going to make sure and measure out that angle and then cut off the side so that I have the correct angle. Just like the floor, I want to cover this piece in mat board. And so luckily I have a lot of mat board that I ended up getting at an estate sale. So not all my mat board is going to match colors. Um, I think I have like a tan and then um, I have like a pink mat board that I use at some point. But um, it's the same stuff. It's all a 16th inch thick mat board. And so I'm just going to cut each wall slowly following the measurements that I'm getting from my initial model. And then I'll have three walls and one floor. Now, uh, before I do anything else, I need to attach the foam board to the mat board. And I'm using tacky glue and I'm just spreading it as much as I can. I'm using a scrap piece of paper to kind of spread it a little bit. And then I'm going to carefully, carefully line the mat board up on top of the foam board. I've done this process in the past and I didn't wait long enough for it to dry. So this time I'm taking lots of heavy books, I'm putting them on each piece and I'm letting it dry overnight. Two or three hours is not always enough time for the tacky glue to dry. So I waited completely overnight and in the morning I was able to take the books off and have some really flat surfaces. The glue had dried and the boards stayed flat, they didn't warp at all. So that was incredibly good news. So now that I have all these pieces, I'm ready to start putting them together to make sure that they all fit. This is a dry fitting process. It's kind of hard to do before the mat board and the foam board are glued together. So I just wanted to make sure everything was cut correctly before I continued on with this project. The easiest way to do this is with masking tape and you just lightly attach them together to make sure everything fits snug. I also pulled out my model just to give you guys an idea of the size difference so you can see the difference between the one centimeter equals a foot model and the one inch equals a foot model. Now I can take some of my floor plan measurements and transfer them to the walls so I'm marking out where the door is going to be again I'm using my drafting triangle to take those marks that I made and um, have the marks go up the wall and this way I know that I'm making some 90 degree angles and 90 degree cuts when I cut out each piece this is a little bit more difficult to cut when you have the foam board and the mat board glued together. It takes quite a few more swipes to cut all the way through the material, but uh, just make sure you have a sharp blade and go slow and it will um, eventually cut through. And also don't be afraid to turn it over and make a cut through the back side as well because if you start just pulling at it, it will rip your foam board. Um, just take your time. Cuts are always annoying and difficult to do, but the more patience you have, the better they come out. So that was the left wall. It just has one door in it, so that one was pretty easy to cut. This is the back wall. It ends up having two windows in it. Again, you can reference my original planning video if you want to see in detail my thought process on how I put together this design. But um, and now I'm going to be using a circle template because I want to have rounded topped windows. A circle template is an amazing tool. It's another thing I'll link in the description below. Um, it just helps you get very consistent curves and um, I really love it and it helps all my windows look exactly the same. So again, I cut these out going very slow. Cutting curves is always a little bit more difficult. Um, 
so of course I had six of them to cut out here. But um, they ended up looking okay. I probably should have changed my blade about a third of, or half the way through, but I didn't. I just kept, um, you know, chugging along, being lazy, but they're okay. They came out right. Uh, I probably will put uh, window sills around it so you won't see that as much. In a lot of the references I was looking at regarding 1700s ships, they had really wide planks of wood and so that's what I wanted to recreate on the walls and on the floor. So I'm using planks of wood that are about three quarter inches apart. That's not quite a foot, it's probably more around like nine inches, is that right? nine inches wide plank of wood and um, that's a pretty wide piece of wood but I like how it looks in the end. Um, I am going to eventually do my process of cutting these grooves and I do show that very extensively in my Uncle Fester's video so I will link that if you're wondering what that is and I show it a little bit later too. I did try a texturing process using um, spackle, that's the white streak that you can see on there but I did not like it. What I want is a worn old wood plank look and I want that texture. So I came up with this process of using wood glue. Of course I put wood glue on pretty much everything. So <laughs> it was my second choice after trying the plaster. And I'm taking a palette knife. This is something you can find in the painting aisle or, I mean, you can even use just a plastic knife. Um, I put one long line of wood glue, and then I spread it. it. I didn't cover the lines, the lines that I just drew with a pencil. I didn't quite touch the lines. Um, I spread it almost to the lines, but not touching them. And then I took the palette knife and just scraped it through the glue to make these lines. This is what's going to make the wood grain and it's also very smooth so it makes it look like it's been worn over years of people brushing up against the walls touching the walls. I did have to be very patient with this process because the way that wood glue is it likes to come back together into one gelatinous blob and so I had to go over it and over it and just take my time and sit there and kind of babysit the glue until it wasn't separating anymore. So it was a long process. It did take a long time this week, longer than I thought, but I just had to sit there and watch it and continue to make marks in the glue until it was pretty much dry and set. Um, this is the process I was talking about earlier where I take my X-Acto knife and cut out the grooves. I make one cut on one side of the line and then another cut on the other side of the line and then I pull the top piece of the mat board off. It's just one little piece of paper and it creates these grooves that looks like grout joint uh, lines in between the pieces of wood. And like I said, I'll, I'll link Uncle Fester's um, room video where I talk about that extensively. And I did this on each piece of the wall, and then I also did this on the floor, although I did not texture the floor. I felt like the floor probably would have been worn down from any texture, so I didn't worry about texturing it too much, and it will probably be the darkest, and so a lot of that texture would have been lost anyway. So it just has the grooves cut without any texture. Now I'm going to be putting the entire piece together and I'm going to be using hot glue. I always say please do not rely on hot glue to hold your projects together. Um, especially I live in Texas and the Texas sun can, um, can melt hot glue and there goes your project. But I do like to use hot glue to kind of spot weld things together uh, while I am using other glue to permanently put it in place. So I just put down a tiny tiny bit of hot glue and then I put my wall in place, wait for the hot glue to grab it and um, that just kind of helps me get everything where it needs to be before I start working with um, I'm going to use wood glue to put everything together because that's the texture that's already on the wall. So that's why I chose wood glue to put everything together. I'm also using it in the corners to make sure that the corners are lining up and um, it just sets up really quickly and you'll know right away if everything's in the right spot. So this is everything put together just with hot glue. 
I would not trust this to hold up for years and years and years because it's not really a lot of hot glue. It's just enough to hold it in place. Um, I am going to trust my wood glue and um, I'm going to, uh, the type that I have is this, um, what is it called? Tight bond? Where is it? Yeah. Tight bond uh, wood glue and it's the kind I've been using although I think most wood glues are the same. I'm not really sure but it has this kind of wedge nozzle, which is really nice because it helped me get the glue into the cracks that were showing at the edge. And then I took another just little piece of paper and just kind of went along the edges, making sure that the glue got really, really good into the cracks. This is what I'm going to rely on holding my project together over the years. Now that everything's dry, I'm taking some black acrylic paint and I'm going to really carefully get all that um, acrylic paint into the grooves and joints of all the wood pieces because that's where a lot of grime and dirt would have built up over the years. Then I'm going to go back and paint the wood planks themselves and I'm going to be really careful to try and not cover up all that black I just worked on, but I'm using a really dark dark brown. This is typically darker than I go, but I feel like just the atmosphere of the ship is just going to be very, very dark. And the wood is typically very dark, um, not just because it's damp, but because it's not typically seen as very clean. It's not, you know, scrubbed a lot, I, I would think. I don't know. But I just typically think of really dark wood. Now when I get to the sides with the wood glue, I do realize that because the wood glue has a very slippery surface, that I'm going to have to do two coats of the brown paint. This is the same exact color I did on the floor, but on the floor it had that paper surface. It didn't have the glue, so it soaked up the paint really well. If you're painting on top of the wood glue, you are going to have to do two coats. As you can see on the left there, it does cover it up with two coats, and it, I think it looked really good. Now I'm going to go in with a um, lighter brown and I'm just basically lightly dusting it on top of each plank and this is going to bring out the wood grain texture. I worked really hard to get that wood grain texture from the wood glue so I want to make sure that it is easily seen when people are looking at the walls. So this lighter brown on top that just picks up the highs of the texture really make it pop out and it gives that wood just a little bit more dimension. I didn't put any on the floor. The floor is not completely done. I think I probably will age more but I'll do that once all the furniture is in place and I know where probably the walking pass would be because that floor area would be even more worn. But for now I'm really happy with how it turned out and I really think it looks like the side of a ship. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I look forward to reading your suggestions down in the comments. If you're looking forward to seeing more on the Captain's Quarters, make sure that you subscribe, hit the notification bell that lets you know when I upload new videos, and share the videos and all the things that help me out here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have an amazing week, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!